Good morning. Welcome to Brevard Community College's Melbourne campus and the B.W. Simpkins Seminar for Entrepreneurial Development. This is our 15th presentation spanning the last seven years. We ask that you please remain seated until the program ends. And students, don't forget to pick up your attendance card from the side door ushers as you leave for your instructor. Today, we honor an extraordinary individual for his entrepreneurship as well as his contributions to the community at large. We wish to thank the series founder, Mr. Bernie Simpkins, for making these events possible and also recognize our college president, Dr. Jim Drake, for his continuing support for entrepreneurship development and curriculum here at BCC. Thank you. An initial highlight of the seminars is the BCC Entrepreneur Essay Competition. The spring 2009 student winner of a $1,000 scholarship is Ethan Babb of the Melbourne campus. Let's hear it, Melbourne. <laughs> Ethan, please come forward to receive your award from Mr. Simpkins. It's my pleasure to be able to introduce to you Ethan Babb. Ethan is from New York originally, has been in Florida for some time. He attends BCC. Afterwards, he hopes to become another Donald Trump and an and entrepreneur in Florida. He will be attending law school. He wants to be an attorney a litigator, and a financier, and own property like Donald Trump. He has great aspirations, and with his good looks and his, his 3.55 grade point average, I'm sure he'll make it, don't you? Congratulations. Congratulations. This, you can't cash this one. <laughs> this is to keep. Thank you, Good. Ethan. And incidentally, uh, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> just just uh, for the record, uh, Mr. Babb has read every single one of Donald Trump's books, by the way. You know, uh, events like this would not be possible without the efforts of a lot of people. And uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, uh, the college, of course, our trustees, and particularly our great newspaper, Florida Today, and their executive editor, Mr. Bob Stover. Badcock Furniture Company, Coco, and the BCC Entrepreneurship Team, faculty and staff. So could we have a little quickie for that? Thank you for being here today. You're in for a real treat. Our guest speaker comes from, uh, um, is a man of vision. Together with his partner and co-founder, Mr. Josh Field, Josh, are you out here somewhere? There's Josh right there. Uh, saw an opportunity in Brevard County. The result has become the premier marketing and media service company of Central Florida, specifically Space Coast Business Magazine and Space Coast Living Magazine. At the conclusion of his remarks, about 11.50, uh, Jeff has agreed to take a few questions. Uh, there are microphones on each side of the auditorium, and they will be manned for you. So if you have a question for Jeff, please feel free to just hold up your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. We are pleased to welcome Mr. Pearsall by this short introductory film. Dogs don't bark at parked cars. It is our pleasure to welcome a speaker who has made that phrase famous. And this speaker is one you will never forget, Jeff Pearsall. Jeff is co-founder and CEO of Space Coast Business, LLC, 
a Melbourne marketing services company that publishes a website in Brevard County, including the publications Space Coast Business Magazine, Space Coast Living Magazine, Discover Brevard, and BrevardCounty.com. Under Jeff's leadership, the company has experienced more than 200% growth since it began in January of 2006. Space Coast Business and Space Coast Living Magazines both have a readership of more than 100,000. The SCB Media Group was awarded the Cocoa Beach Chamber of Commerce and the Melbourne Chamber of Commerce Entrepreneur of the Year Awards for its accomplishments. Jeff has been mentored by John Wooden, a member of the Basketball Hall of Fame. He learned from Mr. Wooden's wisdom, quote, it's not about winning, it's about achieving your best. Are you at your best when it is needed? Winning is a byproduct of achieving your very best, unquote. The oldest of four boys, Jeff is an award-winning high school and college basketball coach, coaching college All-Americans such as NBA player Travis Mays. He has been named Naismith Junior College Coach of the Year, president of the Vieira Suntry Little League, and has coached three state championships and seven regional championships. Jeff has served as vice president of sales and marketing for Vulcan Binder, a division of EBSCO Industries, a billion dollar international magazine company. He's also served as vice president of international sales for Relive International, and also vice president of sales for the Limu Company and president CEO of Legacy for Life. Jeff serves on the board of directors for United Way of Brevard, Journey Church, Junior Achievement, and the Titusville and Melbourne Chambers of Commerce. Jeff is married to Judy, his wife of 26 years. Their children are Kaylee, Allie, and Wes. In Jeff's own words, titles are meaningless. It's only the last person who you touched that matters. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our distinguished speaker and a lifelong coach, Jeff Pearsall. Stand where you are for a moment. We uh, just take a, a silent moment for Melissa, who um, 15 year old who passed away at Vieira High School last night in a, a car accident. With me, please. Thanks. There was a uh, elderly gentleman who was walking down the beach. And as he was coming down the beach, he noticed in the diff dis distance a pile of rubbage, at least it appeared so to him, and a, and a little boy beside that rubbage. As he got closer, he recognized that the little boy was digging into the rubbage and throwing back into the ocean. As he got closer, he understood that it was a pile of starfish. He approached the little boy and said, son, what are you doing? And he said, sir, all these starfish, they washed up and they're going to die. I got to get them back into the ocean. And one at a time, he just kept throwing. And he said, son, you'll never, never make a difference to these starfish. There's thousands of them here. And the little boy picked up the next one. And as he threw, he said, it makes a difference to that one. And the old man joined the little boy. Entrepreneurship is nothing more than making a difference. And Bernie, I want to congratulate you and all the differences that you've made. My attire today is in recognition of you and all your pastel colors. Uh, Bernie has always got bright ones on, and purple is his favorite. He, and of course, you didn't wear it today. So, But um, in all seriousness, you're, you're at a point in time in history right now where entrepreneurship is, is singularly the most important thing that we could be talking about. Um, in 1900, 
you were dealing with virtually 90% of our country was self-employed. They had the burn, they had the spirit. You go through a depression, a couple war wars, a couple tragic events in our country, and lo and behold, today you look up and about 40% of the country is employed by the government. We've lost it. You're not going to get out of where you are today unless you understand the spirit that it takes to be an entrepreneur. And so one of the things that we're going to do today is we're going to identify those different things and we're also going to give you some how-tos in order to be able to make those things successful for you. There's two components of being an entrepreneur. The first one is actually the spirit of an entrepreneur, and it can be learned. You've got a lot of guys that are great, you know, corporate engineers and accountants and different things, and they turn into capturing the spirit of an entrepreneur. My partner, Josh, came from that corporate background. When we started this business, he looked at me and said, I don't know anything about being an entrepreneur. I just know it's kind of what I want to go do so that I can have the freedom and the passion. You can learn, and he has learned in a tremendous way. My good friend Dave over here with Hurricane Product Warehouse came from a corporate background. He's a tremendous entrepreneur. He's got a tremendous business that's creating great value in the area. One of the greatest stories I've ever heard was, if you can imagine, a two-story home that's uh, in a normal community, and mom's downstairs, it's about 6 o'clock in the morning, and she's cooking breakfast, and as she's cooking breakfast, she hollers upstairs, Jimmy, it's time to get up and come. We've got to get going to school. You've got to get your breakfast. A few more minutes go by, and there is no Jimmy. So mom has now proceeded over to the bottom of the staircase and is hollered up with a little bit louder tone, Jimmy, you got to get up. It's time for breakfast. A couple minutes go by, and there's still no Jimmy. So now mom is up the stairs, and many of the kids that are here today are now remembering these moments, and some of the younger folks, I see Rebecca over there smiling because her mom's been up the stairs at her before, and he go, she goes all the way up the stairs, storms into the room, shaking Jimmy. Jimmy, you got to get up. It's time to go to school. Mom, please, please don't make me do this. Those kids, they hate me. People write about me. They say bad things about me. The teachers dislike me. You can't make me go to school today. Please, please, Jimmy, get out of bed. I'm going to give you two good reasons that you've got to get moving right now. One, you're 42, and two, you're the principal of the school. <laughs> what, what happens to us when we lose this spirit is we feel just that trapped. That's exactly the place that we become. The other piece is the born entrepreneur. Now, the born entrepreneur is probably pretty easy to find because it's the person who can't spell entrepreneur. So any of our teachers know it instantly. It, it is a, a very easy thing to identify. I don't know why they ever created that word in the first place because I've never gotten it right, and I'm just glad that they got spell check on Microsoft Word because you know the little red lines under it, and you've got to go redo it again. But that is the nature of an entrepreneur. I want you to look at these characteristics with me for a moment. And as you move through these, constantly in motion, addictive tendencies, quick decision making, distractible, short attention span, they love adventure, high energy, talkative, strong will, hyperactivity, and talkative. You read those descriptions, and what does it make you think of? Any of our high school teachers here today think and look and read these because they are the characteristics of an ADD child. They are also the exact same characteristics of an entrepreneur. One of the greatest things that we have happening in our society today is called conformity. Our school systems work, they're good school systems, but the more that we try to conform people to all be the same, the more you move along and lose the entrepreneur spirit. If, I, if they had had Ritalin when I was in school, I would have been on Ritalin. There is no other way about it. I was the same guy that was sitting in the back of the room shooting the spitballs and making sure they landed on the teacher, making sure they got in the cute girl's ear on the other side of the room, and nobody knew it was me because I was good. That's the entrepreneur. You know, the entrepreneur is the guy that leads the game in the streets. 
because you've tried to conform him to something that he can't be and you haven't given him an opportunity to go be who he can be. It rides in all of us, and we've got to be very careful about ever getting rid of it. What we need to teach in school is we need to teach risk-reward analysis. Bernie said something great at lunch yesterday to Ethan, and it is the risk-reward analysis is the potential. It's the potential that you have, the potential that, of what you can go do. But every decision that you're going to be making in life is based around a risk and reward analysis. What's my risk to this decision? And what's my reward for doing this decision? And you've got to be able to learn how to do that. Yes, there's great attributes to science, math, English, and all that kind of stuff. i got a PE degree. I don't know what it's done for me in business at all. All right? It doesn't have anything to do with it. But if you can understand how to make decisions and, and, and monitor that potential... The second thing that we need to teach is basic respect, and you're going to see as we move through this presentation more in regard to that area. Real quickly, there's four stages in life. There's four stages in any organization. If there's anything you take out of here today, you need to make sure you go home with these. Rich DeVos shared these with me, the owner of the Orlando Magic, the creator of Amway. He's counseled with probably six or seven different presidents under the same exact stages of life. Every relationship, every family, every organization, church, school, athletic team, they all go through these stages. You start off and it's real good. You're in the build and create mode. And then all of a sudden you slip into the management mode. The management mode is where you want to be king. You've been working real hard and now you want other people to go do what it was that you did in the build and create mode and this is the time where you get to put your feet up on the desk and look out the big window over the river. And as you stay in the management mode, you will slip into the defender of no growth. The defender of no growth is a scary place to be. Because at the defender of no growth, you have all kinds of good justifications of why you can no longer grow. Why you can no longer make good things happen. And then you slip into the dreaded blame stage. In the blame stage, you are very close to death of that organization. If you look at divorce today, it's always somebody else's fault. If you look at the destruction of an organization, it's always somebody else's fault. You go talk to the athlete who's not playing, it's always the coach's fault. It's always somebody else's fault. One of the greatest little stories around blame President Bush was in his exit, and he was uh, in his private meeting with President Obama, and he handed to him and said, Mr. President, I want you to know that every president in the history of America has received these three envelopes, and it's very important that you follow these envelopes very, very carefully. Mr. Obama said, I definitely will. Thank you, President Bush. And as President Obama moved on and Moved into his first crisis, the envelope read, at your first crisis, open this envelope. And at that crisis, he opened that envelope, and inside that envelope it said, blame me, President Bush, for everything. Okay. As they moved along, envelope number two, at the second crisis, it is time to open envelope number two. Second crisis comes along, opens envelope number two, and it says, President Obama, blame my party, the Republican Party, for all of this crisis. But okay, and that worked real well. Then he got to crisis number three and went to envelope number three. It said, at crisis number three, open this envelope. And he opens the envelope and it reads, President Obama, please prepare three envelopes. <laughs> we really got to get out of the blame stage. It's a stage that will kill you and it kill your business and kill your relationship. I'm going to make an assumption here, and we need to, as we move through, understand this definition of success. And that is the progressive realization of a worthy goal. As we move through and you understand a little bit more about dogs not barking at parked cars, you're going to realize that we have to be moving toward a goal all the time. And that movement is what causes the success for us. 
But you've got to know your goal and you've got to know what it is that you want to accomplish. Here's something that you need to remember about those parked cars and those dogs. The only thing that a dog does with a parked car is what? He pees on it. That's all he does. He just marks his territory. As we move on, you're going to find out what else happens with that same barking dog. I want to give you five values and principles at this time that basically you can use as a roadmap. This is a roadmap for you to be successful in anything that you want to go do. It wouldn't matter if it's business, personal life, you know, all entrepreneurship revolves around the same thing. The first place it starts is right there with you, and it takes direct accountability. Accountability is the word that messes all of us up. I want you to uh, stop and think for a moment. There was a, a great book written. It's called Think and Grow Rich. And in that book, there is a principle. And I think all of us would agree with this principle. That everybody you meet, you have an opportunity to learn something from that person. It could be good or it could be bad. Now, would we all agree to that? Show a little hand, that'd be fine, all right? If that is true, if that principle is true, and I believe it to be true just as you do, then that means that everybody you are meeting is learning something from you. Now, what is it? Is it good or is it bad? That's a choice that you're making on your own. The accountability of us I think really starts and is summed up in this little story. There was a little boy, and I stole this from uh, Eric Wright. I see him back there in the middle, so, you know, that, that really is what all talks are about. There is nothing original. All we do is just keep stealing it from each other, and then we repeat it three times, and it becomes ours. <laughs> but uh, Eric was sharing a story one day, and, and there was a little boy, about six years old, and he went into his dad's home office. And he, wa and he wanted to play ball with his dad. He said, Dad, come outside. Let's play ball. He said, Son, I'm, I'm too busy right now. Come back in a few minutes and I'll be ready. A few minutes came by just right on time. That little boy was right there at the door. He said, Dad, come on. Let's go play ball. Son, I, I, I'm still busy. You haven't given me enough time. Go on. Well, sure enough, right comes back that little boy. Dad still, you know, he's not ready. He looks over and he sees in a magazine that there's this nice, great picture of the world laid out in the magazine. So he tears that sheet of paper out and starts tearing it all up into little pieces. And he said, you know, son, you take this and go with it and you put that puzzle together. And when you come back with that puzzle together, I'll go play ball with you. Dad thinking, you know, kid never put the globe on, you know, the world map and all that back together. Six years old, no way to do it. Well, it wasn't two minutes later, and the little boy's walking back in with the whole thing made. And he said, how did you do that, son? He said, it was real easy, Dad. On the other side was a man, and all I did was I put the man together, and the world came together right behind it. <laughs> That's accountability. That's accountability. You put the man together, the world takes care of itself. We keep trying to address the world instead of addressing ourselves we got to get ourselves right first. Coaches understand this more than anybody else, I think. There is no I in the team. You are never more valuable than the organization. You are not what is most important. But it is literally always up to you if anything's ever going to get done. It's just the way that it's going to be. You've got to surround yourself with great talent and great winners. Those opportunities only come around ever so often and you got to make sure that you take advantage of them. you got to learn to pay yourself first. Now, Ethan, I'm going to give you a, a real rare, rare opportunity. Come here, son. <laughs> Ethan's over there going, oh, my gosh. Now, this is going to be a uh, summation and all everything of entrepreneurship. I know some of you guys would uh, love to have this $100 bill. So I'm going to give Ethan the opportunity to have that $100 bill. Is that okay with you? Yeah. So now you're going to walk out of here with $1,100. <laughs> Is that better? That's great. That's great. Okay. All right, here's the deal. I want you to put your finger and thumb just like that. You got it? Yeah. Now I'm going to put this $100 bill in between you. 
You got it? And then I'm going to let go. All you got to do is grab it. Fair enough? You grab it, it's yours. You sure? Well, I've had a lot of stud athletes do this. Travis Mays tried this 20 times. <laughs> played for the Sacramento Kings, played overseas for 20 years. You ready? Man, you, what, why is those fingers shaking so bad? <laughs> All right, Ethan, some of you that are employers, you can use this one. Since we can't get it physically, let's try it mentally. All right, here we go. You're driving down the road in your car, and you come up to a bus stop. In the bus stop is your best friend. Got it? Yeah. Also in the bus stop is a little old lady who's on her last leg. She's got to get to the hospital. She's dying. You've got to get her to the hospital. You with me? Yeah. And also in that bus stop is the most beautiful woman that you've ever seen in your life. It is your dream woman. You got it? You got all three people sitting there. Now, here's the opportunity for you, okay? You've only got one seat in the car. Who are you going to take? The old woman. You're going to take the old woman? Why? You're going to do that to your friend? Yeah. You're going to break loyalty? Yeah. And you're going to sacrifice you and not ever have your dream woman? You'll never see her again in your life. Yeah, yeah you're going to take the old woman. Yeah. Here's the challenge, Ethan. You got to learn how to think out of the box. What you do is you give the keys to your best friend. He takes the old lady to the hospital and you stay with the girl. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Ethan, hold up. Now, you're an entrepreneur, you got your own business, right? What's the number one thing that you got to always do? Be accountable. But what do you got to always do? Ultimately, you got to always ask, don't you? Don't you do you desire this? Yeah. Then why didn't you ask for it? <laughs> Congratulations. You. you got to be physically ready, you got to be mentally ready, and you can't be afraid to ask. What's the worst thing that they're going to tell you? No. Boy, you'd be, afraid, you'd, be, you'd be amazed how many people are afraid of no. Oh, that hurt me. I've never seen no cut somebody. I've never seen it. Just ask. It's okay. You've got to read. Now, we didn't get very many books out here today, but here's what I want you to do. Imagine this. You stand on the books you read, it's easier to see the horizon. The more books you read, the higher you go. If you want to be able to see and have vision, you got to read. Here's one of the number one things. There's two things that every top CEO in the world, Think and Grow Rich, was a book on all the most successful owners and entrepreneurs of the world. There was two things that they had. There were only two things. And one is they all read great books. Today, 90% of the of men after they graduate from high school will never read a good book again. They'll never read a good book again. All the knowledge you need. You want to make all the money in the world? You want to be successful? Everything's already been done. There is nothing new. Just because technology is different and this is different doesn't mean anything. Do you realize that you can read one book a month on one particular topic and at the end of one year you will be qualified as an expert in that area. Do it for 10 years and you can receive a Nobel Peace Prize. Seriously. Burning desire. I need a mom that's got young kids. Got a mom in here? Come on. Oh, you're a long ways away. How old are your kids? Nine. That's a little tight. One, three, five, oh, you're perfect. Come on. <laughs> Come here, hustle up, hustle, hustle. We got to understand what a burning desire means. You know, a lot of times athletes will go, I, you know, I want to win, I want to win. Uh, you know, they don't get what a burning desire really is. What's your name now? Jennifer. Jennifer. All right. 
Now, Jennifer, here's the deal. They're one, three, five. And eight. You're still alive. And they're all boys. And they're all boys. Oh, my God. I grew up with all boys. So I, I was yeah, like, oh, I'm right yeah, you, need to, you need to go visit with my mom for a while. <laughs> um, here's the deal. All right? I have the keys to your car. I have all the money that you own. You have no access to anything. I have all your credit cards. I have all your identity. Everything is totally stripped away from you. All you have is you standing here right now. You with me? Mm -hmm. Your four boys are in Los Angeles, California right now. What time is it here? Anybody got the time? 11.34. Got it? Mm -hmm. Out there, it's 8.34. If you're not there by 5 o'clock, you get nervous, aren't you? If you're not there by 5 o'clock p.m. California time, mm -hmm. you will never again in your life ever see those four boys. Will you be there? Mm -hmm. Do you know how? No, but I'll find a way. Thank you. <laughs> Give her a hand. <laughs> you have got to understand that it is not about how. It is about why. When you have a why and a burning desire, you're going to figure out how to get there. Goals. Goals are simple. You know, it's the purpose that we have to have in our lives. It's very easy. The education system provides it to us. How long is it okay for your son or daughter to stay in the third grade? One year? Two years? Three years? Four? It's very simple. The education system gives it to us. You get started, by next, set, or by next May, you need to be out of there. It's a duration of time that's measured with a measurable result. Isn't it interesting how we don't ever talk about it in the education system? It's there and it's clearly defined for us. You've got to have your goals and you've got to constantly adjust. If you listen to the space shuttle when it takes off, one degree back to the right, two degrees back to the left, another minute goes by, three degrees back to the right. The whole time it's constantly adjusting. You know where you're going and you've got to make adjustments as you go through. That's all that there is. If you don't, this is what happens to you. You can start in Spain, heading for Boston on a boat, one degree a day, and you end up in South America. One degree a day, and you're in South America. Is it no wonder that we've got people running around like Yogi Berra says, you don't know where you're going, you just end up somewhere. Got no idea where you are, but you're there. You got to wake up early. You know, there is nothing found at nighttime. I, I told a group yesterday, I was, uh, I've got a place in Tennessee and I can go out on the deck of the cabin at night and I can sit out on the deck of the cabin and literally call the owls. Hoo -hoo 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 -hoo. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> I can take an owl from across the lake and bring it all the way over to the cabin. I can also go out at that same place on the boat during the day and look up and see the eagle soaring way, way, way up above. Folks, you cannot hoot with the owls and soar with the eagles. It's impossible. It's impossible. All the great vision is discovered in the morning of the peace of the morning. you got to get up early if you're going to make something happen. Perseverance. You know, this is the one that gets most people. You cannot, cannot, cannot quit. And the, here's the thing about it. Everything's going to change. Change is just a fact of life. It's always going to happen because everything that's living is in motion. The stage is dead, but you and I are in motion. Death and taxes are for sure, and so is change. It will always be a constant. What is today won't be tomorrow, won't be a year from now. If you want to make a difference, just start making a difference in your daily life. It'll accumulate. Here's the thing, though, is that it takes courage to act. It takes courage to get up and go make that action. And I want to make sure that I give you this warning because along the way, most people get full of pride. And because of that pride, it goes right before a fall. Stay humble in what it is that you do. you got to maintain discipline. We most of the time hate this word because it, re it revolves around work. You've got to be consistent in your discipline 
Because it takes the little tiny things in life to make the big things happen. You know, I used to watch the coaches in the, in the youth sports. They would teach all the seven, eight, nine-year-olds how to do the play. They would never teach them how to dribble, pass, and shoot. If you don't know how to dribble, pass, and shoot, the play is worthless. This is a strategy that we've lost in our society today because we've become lotto winners. We think the lotto is going to do it for us. You've got to plant, you've got to cultivate, and you've got to harvest the ideas that you want to achieve. Planting takes only one day. The farmer can get it all planted in one day. Harvest takes the next seven to nine, or cultivating takes the next seven to nine months. And the harvest takes one day. But we want to microwave it, we want to pop it, we want to get the lotto. And here's the thing about the lotto winners. 98% are broke and the other 2% just had not had enough time. Because you can't take something for free and manage it. It won't happen. You've got to go earn it. So you might as well just go ahead and realize work is a part of the process. Here's the warning to all of you. Driving, sex, and drugs are mistakes that you make one time and you never get back. You know, we stopped this morning on my way home last night with, with Wes after our baseball game. I was coming around the curve at Dunkin' Donuts and right in front of us it happened. And I had the worst feeling in the world and it ended up being a little girl that he's been in school with since the second grade. Didn't wear a seatbelt. One mistake. You don't get it back. That family is wrecked for life. Wrecked for life. You only get one mistake. Lynn Bias. Probably the single best basketball player I've ever witnessed. Signed by Boston Celtics. Went out and that night for the first time tried cocaine. Dead the next morning. Left his family broke. And he had signed for millions. He had millions sitting on the table for all of that hard work, all of that time thrown away in one event. You can't make these mistakes. Next is you got to believe. How many people, who in here knows the definition of reputation? Scream it out, doesn't matter. Anybody? What'd you say? What other, what other people, what others think of you? Here's the question for you. Can you control what other people think of you? No, you can't. That's impression management. That's what politicians do. And if there's any in the room, I'm sorry. You know, the only thing that you need to work on is your character. You don't need to worry about your reputation. If you take care of your character, your reputation will be fine. But we worry about impression management. Character is the stuff you do when nobody's looking. And you know what? You can't hide it. It's going to come out sooner or later. Your character is either good or it's not. Faith versus fear. Every great entrepreneur has great faith in their future. Faith and fear have the exact same definitions. It's the things unseen in our future. You've got to choose faith versus fear, or if you choose fear, you're going to always end up with the negative consequences. Faith will always bring the positives. In January, there was a pilot that took off, and as he took off with a plane full of people, and he started to head out, they had obvious problems. And he came on and he said, everybody, you need to prepare for a rough landing. Place your head between your knees and hold on. We're going down in the middle of the water. And there they went. And to the person, to the person, every single one it lived and admitted that when I put my head between my knees, we all began to pray. Why is it that we do the things in crisis that we ought to be doing on every day? There's your answer, folks. Do the things that you ought to be doing every day, not just in crisis. Do you realize that nobody sued anybody that came off that plane and said, ooh, you interfered with my rights? There were no lawsuits. The answers are there for you if you want to turn to them. Can I get five volunteers real quickly? Come on. Just come on down. Hustle up. 
This is a little demonstration I saw about seven years ago, and I think it will sum up really what the entire entrepreneurial spirit is about. Y'all come right on over here. I got one, two, three, four. That's all right. We got six of you. Guess what? I got one more. Bam. You not coming now? And y'all gonna make me work and make me work fast. Pat Fuller's gonna be driving crazy. He's in there looking at his clock. All right, here we go. This is what you gotta do real quickly for me, okay? You gotta go over and grab an apple off the table. Go get one. Man, she's serious about this. All right, here we go. Now you ready? Get to know that apple like it's your best friend. Because there may be a day there may be a time where you lose your best friend and you don't have a chance to see him ever again. So make sure you look at that apple real, real good. Has everybody got to know their friend real good? You sure? Okay. Bring your apple right over here. And lay it down. Put it back down. I saw what he did. <laughs> Go back over there. See, the elderly, they get trickier and trickier, right? <laughs> now, I didn't ask you to come over here. <laughs> well, you can tell he's an entrepreneur. Go find your friend. See, he's still jumping out of line. Hurry up. You got him? You sure? You're positive. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, I'll let you go now. Are you sure now? You got it. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is going to be pretty easy because I saw what these last two did. All right, y'all go get your apples. Now, are you sure that's your best friend? All right, why is that your best friend? I pulled out the stem. And there's a flat edge right here. You got a bruise and you pulled out the stem. Yeah. Okay. Why is that yours? Because it's colorful. Colorful. You notice all the color on I did. it. I like to leave a good impression. <laughs> so you damaged your friend. <laughs> no, I just made some improvements. You, you, when those all turn brown and sour, I don't know. I dug my finger into it. You dug your finger into <laughs> your Okay, great. Had a uh, bruise by the stem where it's touching the apple. Sure does. Big scar right there. Green blemish. A green blemish. And you just tore yours up. I wanted to know what it was all about. I wanted to taste it. So you tasted it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you just bit right on into it. Why? Let me ask you something. Why is it that we go through life and we remember our friends by the marks and the scars? And we'll even damage and scar them so that we can actually see who they are later. Why is that? Bring me your buddy. Uh huh. That's my old buck knife. You're getting real scared now, aren't you? What do you see? The core of the apple. What do you see? Seeds. What is that? The core. The seeds. Look at it closely. The star. What did you say? The star. There's a star there, isn't there? Yeah. Just pass that down and take a look at it. If you want to know the secret to business, the secret to life, the secret to prosperity, you have got to figure out how you see the star that exists inside of every burning individual. Every individual has a purpose. Every individual has a potential. And do you see it? And do you find it? And can you bring it out of them? Or are you scarring them? And are you identifying them for some weakness? Give these guys a great hand. Thank you. Appreciate your time. That's all right. Here's what you got to avoid. You got to avoid crabology. Crabology is seen on the beaches every day with all the great fishermen. It's a bucket of crabs. They put a bait on. They throw it out. And guess what happens? The next crab, they don't have to worry about it because all the crabs in that bucket, you need no top. 
They start crawling out and they can get out. They get all the way up to the top of the edge and the next crab reaches up and just grabs him and pulls him back in. Folks, that's what people are doing to you every day with your dreams. They're just reaching up and grabbing you and pulling you back. You can't pay any attention to it. You've got to pursue your passion, your goal, and you've got to pursue it 110% and know that you can get it done. Here's the thing about those dogs that are out there. I was riding down the road as a 10-year-old on my bicycle. I used to ride all over town. That was back when we could do it. Now we worry, oh, don't go around the block. And I was riding along in a big Dalmatian, true story, came running out of a house, and he was getting after it. He was coming after me. And I turned to look down to pay attention to that daggum Dalmatian. I even reached my leg out like I was going to kick him, and he put one right there on me. The barking dogs will always, always be there if you're pursuing something that is worthy. The distractors will always come out. They will always be barking at you. But here's the thing that you got to remember. If you don't pay any attention to them, they never bite. I've never seen a barking dog chasing a car that ever bit it. Get moving and pursue your dreams, and you will never get bit, and you'll never get peed on either. Thanks, and I appreciate it all. Now, Mr. Pearsall has agreed to take a question or two. If you have a question, just hold your hand up, and we'll get a microphone to you. Uh, and while we're, uh, while we're doing that, let me just say that he's pretty good, isn't he? Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And the person behind Mr. Pearsall is his wife, Judy, and I'd like you to stand up and be recognized, please. There's. <laughs> thank you, Judy. All right. Oh, she really appreciates you for that one. <laughs> Go ahead. What's your question? Where can I get a copy? your speech that's got everything that was on the screen. Just see me afterwards. All right, thank you. You got it, no problem. Time I ever got an apple to a teacher, I ought to take one to him. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Go ahead, sir. Stand up. By the way, when you stand up, your income will go up. It just makes you that much stronger in what you're doing. You know, that's a great question. He asked, you know, what would you tell 40 and 50 year old people that are starting their own business today? Old Dave from Wendy's never got it done until he was about 67. Um, Sam Walton, Walmart. He was up, up into his 60s before he actually really ever got the business up and really going. Uh, Ray Kroc, McDonald's, was up into his 60s. Colonel Sanders was up into his 70s of Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know, here's the message, and I don't mean to be just all harping on food and retail, but it is never too late to pursue your dream. The fact of the matter is, is you're going to go through more failure than you're going to ever go through success. You only need one success, only one. Abraham Lincoln, who may have been our greatest president, never got elected to an office until he got elected to presidency. He failed 13 times. Michael Jordan, in the 82 NCAA championship, hit the game-winning bucket as a freshman for North Carolina, giving Dean Smith his first NCAA championship. Do you realize that Michael Jordan, up to that point, had missed 26 in a row last-second game-winning shots. Had never hit one in his life. Had missed 26. Still wasn't afraid to take it. You, get, you, you just got to keep having the courage to act. All right? That is a great question. Anybody else?
education and knowledge for that business, but you know the name of your company, you know what you want your website to be like. What's the first step to making your business become real? The first thing that uh, I would do is go back to the risk reward analysis. Does that business have potential? We all have a lot of great ideas, and you want to go after your passion, but your passion's got to be able to have somebody pay you for it. All right? There's nothing wrong with making money. You know, number one is there's nothing written anywhere in the world that says you ought to go through life broke. Okay? Understand that. It is written you should never love money. You got it? So understand the risk-reward analysis for the potential of that business, and then start getting around the people who are successful already in that business because they're there. All right, you got to know that competition. Here's the great thing about great people. Now, understand I said great people, okay? If they are great people and they are already successful in that business, they will share with you open heartedly. I mean, they will love the fact that you came and asked. But most of us are scared to death to go ask. And if they don't want to share with you, here's the thing that you know. They ain't successful. They're just all that in a bag of chips and somebody's going to eat them up one day. You got it? So get around the successful people. Analyze that risk reward for potential. Great question. And then keep rocking with it. You have to speak up now. Um, yes, you will. very successful up until about the last two years. Mm -hmm. Computer related, I'm a consultant and there's a lot of people that can do computer stuff. So right. it's not as unique anymore. It's harder to charge for 150 bucks an hour to do stuff. So I started another company back at Christmas time and I calculated I need about ten thousand dollars to do what I need to do. Right. And you're asking me where to go get that? Here's the, uh, and, and you, you got a great question, and it ties over to a question that was asked by me. And, and here's the thing that happens, is that somebody that's going to invest with you, they want to know only one thing. What's my return? That's all they want to know. They just want to know what's my return. And so what most people do is they want to present their plan and say, this is my money. I'm not saying this is what you're doing, okay? I got you right on. They want to present their plan, but then they want to say, you know, this is how I'm going to do it. This is what's going to happen. You know, that it, nobody that's investing money cares. They care about that secondarily. They want to know, what's my return? You got it? So that, that's your key to it. And you know what? Here's the nice thing about money. It'll find you. It will find you. You know, if Betsy Farmer's sitting out there, I mean, I don't know how many different things Betsy's done over the last 20 years, and money keeps finding, keeps finding for that worthy cause, okay? It'll find you. You just got to know that you want it and where you're going with it, okay? Great question. Appreciate that. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, as an entrepreneur, I have this passion to want to help people okay. and provide them not only a service but an opportunity. How, do you have a specific formula for how many times you offer an opportunity to someone before you go on to the next starfish, so to say? Sure. That's, <laughs> my wife's sitting over there going, oh, he's going to have fun with this one. Um, she tends to call me Batman. You know, quit trying to save the world, and that's what sometimes we'll, you know, but you can never lose that passion for people. You know, it, you, you, you got to go for yourself. Remember, it's never about you, but it's always up to you. Here's what you've got to do. You've got to do this about asking. You've got to do this about opportunities that you're willing to share with someone. You share it. You follow up. You take it away, move on to the next. If there's not a light on, there's no light on. 
It's not your job to try to turn the light on. People have got to figure out if the light comes on them or not. Young man came up after yesterday's presentation. He was a cool dude. Man, he had on a knit hat. He was just up here hanging loose, did the apple, went back down, came back up afterwards, and he said, you know, I lost it, and I didn't know I had lost it. He said, I lost all dreams, all goals. I'd given up. And he said, I got it back in this apple today. You see, it's, it's not about trying to reach a 1,000 at a time. It's just one at a time. And that's all you got to do. But if they're not interested, move on. Quit trying to convince people of what they have to do. Give it to them. They either run with it or they don't. We got this with employees all the time. You know, a bunch of our employees are here today. In fact, won't you guys stand up? Because these are some of the best there is. Go ahead, stand up. And um, I see you, Jacqueline. I see you staying down there. You know, you, they got to have a burning desire. And Mitch Gardner wrote a, 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 an article. But he's the CEO of Symmetrics in our most recent uh, publications with uh, Space Coast Business. And if you want to stay on top of your game, I got to tell you, if you're not reading Space Coast Business every month, you're not going to stay there. There's more information. Josh does a better job of getting content and information in that publication to allow you to be successful than anything I've seen in the country. It doesn't get duplicated. I don't have anything to do with it. Josh does it. I mean, you know, all I do is just see where the next opportunity is and try to get them to come along. And his problem is I'm always about three months ahead of where he is. So, you know, it, that's just part of what makes us successful. But, you, you know, keep, pull it and keep moving, okay? Anybody else? We've got time for a couple more. We have time for one final question. I guess we got one more question. <laughs> Do you uh, suggest ways to identify up and coming businesses to get into? Can we identify ways of up and coming businesses? You know, I, I think obviously if you're constantly looking at trends, and if you see a trend, and here's the thing about life, it's always cyclical, okay? You know, if you'd have been paying attention 50 years ago, you would have noticed that all of a sudden, America decided to give birth to a bunch of kids. And there was people that recognized that, and they started getting into the diaper business, and they started getting into all this other kid stuff, and man, they ran to baby boomers like nobody could have ever ran them, all right? Well, now, you know, people know the baby boomers are moving on up into the python's body as a big old bubble, and uh, it's going to be about senior care and health care. But did anybody just notice recently we just hit another big old tick of babies coming out? So what's coming again in another 25 years? you got a load of kids coming. You know, that's the thing that starts happening in these great recession times. You know, nobody really stops and thinks about it. Man, there's more time at home with mama. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about me, man. I'm done. I got three that are so <laughs> She'd take a gun to my head if we ever got around to that thought again. But that's really what you got to do. You got to pay attention, look at, the, look at the event of today, and say, okay, what does that mean 25 years from now? And then I've always said, if you get around successful people, you'll be successful. You put unsuccessful people around you, You'll waddle around in the gutters of life because that's where they're going to keep you. Thanks a lot. I do appreciate that. that Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Pierceau. Thank you. Thanks for coming. A uh, couple of final announcements. A couple of final announcements, please. Students, be sure you pick up your attendance cards from the side ushers as you leave. We've got an exciting program for you in November. Please come back. We'll see you then. And students, don't forget, you could get $1,000 with an essay. See your coordinator on your campus.